Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are in 1 Peter chapter 2 and in verse 20 this lesson. But before we begin our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord, Jeremiah 15 verse 16. Thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw in last lesson in verse 19, Peter here is writing and he's saying, for this is thankworthy. This is something that is thankworthy in the eyes of God. If a Christian, I, I says man, but if a Christian for conscience toward God endure grief, stays under the grief, stays under the persecution and the suffering, and he does it suffering wrongfully. It's a thankworthy thing in the eyes of God if we suffer wrongfully. Remember, Jesus was, Jesus was suffered wrongfully, okay? He knew no sin. He never committed sin. And therefore, he, therefore, he suffered. He was persecuted wrongfully without a cause, all right? And now he says here in verse 20, Peter, Peter goes on and he says, for what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. All right. But let's let's break this verse down here. And he says in the first part of verse 20, for what glory is it? All right, what glory is it? And this Greek word for glory is kleos. And it's not, it's not the Greek word doxa for glory, which means the glory of God. It's not the same Greek word. This is kleos. And kleos means fame. It means honor. It means praise. It means good report. Uh, it means to be of renown. So, he says, what praise, what glory, what honor is there if when you be buffeted for your faults? Okay, now let's go to the Greek word for faults first. Faults is hamartano, hamartano. And it comes from the Greek word hamartia, which means to miss the mark. It's the Greek word we use for sin, to sin, all right? And Peter here, when he says, if when you're buffeted for your faults, doesn't mean not talking about a bad decision. Well, I, I made a bad decision in my life. Um, I, I should have done this and, or, and I didn't do it. But no, it's not talking about just making a bad decision. It's talking about actual sins that we commit. All right? Actual sins. So he says, and then he says, if you're buffeted. Now, the Greek word for buffeted is kolafizo, kolafizo. And it means to strike with the fist or to strike with a closed hand. So Peter here is describing a person, a, a, he's actually he's talking here to, he's writing this letter to, uh, Christians, to Jewish Christians. And he's saying, what glory, what honor, what praise is there for you if you're beaten up because you committed a sin? Okay? If you're, if, if, if you steal money from someone, even though you're a Christian, hey, we all have the sinful nature. It, it's there. Okay? And, and we are tempted to sin. So if we steal money from someone or we steal something from someone or we date somebody's husband or wife, right? If you're, 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 you gossip or you say something, you ruin someone's reputation, you try to destroy someone, even though you're a Christian. So they, they send somebody or they come themselves and they beat you up. Well, what glory is there for that? And then he says here at the last part, and you shall take it patiently. That's the key. You shall take it patiently. And patiently is hupomeno. 
And hupo means under, and meno means to abide. So it means to stay under, to abide under the, 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 the punishment, to abide under the beating that you're getting because of the sin that you committed, all right? So Peter asks this question, what glory are you going to receive or what praise is it that you will get if you abide under a beating that you actually deserve, all right? And what Peter, with the answer, uh, the answer to Peter's question is that there is no honor, there is no glory for a person who receives a beating or punishment for sins that they actually have done. Even Christians deserve punishment sometimes. Christians, like I said, we all have a sinful nature. We're all tempted to sin and we're all tempted to speak to, to, uh, to speak gossip or to say something or to do something to cause someone to lose money or to lose their job or to lose a boyfriend or a girlfriend because of jealousy or whatever. We're all tempted to do that. And, and just because we're Christian doesn't mean, doesn't mean we're not tempted. We still have a sinful nature. Yes, Jesus Christ did break the power of the sinful nature within us, but it's still there and it still resides. And that sinful nature is still living and it's still and it still has a tendency to want to draw us down to it. OK. But but beware. Lest you find yourself judging other Christians as for the reason why they are being buffeted. You see another Christian and they're being buffeted something they're being punished in some way for something they did. Beware lest you take a step back and you say, see, I knew I knew there was something weird with that Christian. They, they just have that look on their face. I, I knew they weren't all, all in for God. I knew it, you know. And, and, and we begin to judge this Christian because we see that Christian being punished for something that that in their life, Okay, now we don't know, we're not God. Therefore, we don't know if they're being punished justly or if they're being punished unjustly. God knows, but we don't know, all right? So, beware when you see a Christian being buffeted for, for something in their life that's going on. Don't, don't judge and say, see, I knew. And then you begin to start gossiping. You begin to start spreading around gossip about that person. Because usually judging turns into gossip. And gossip, gossip means that now God will have to judge me for gossiping. All right? Because I gossiped about this person, now God has to see that I receive some kind of punishment for my gossiping. Remember, in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, gossip is one of the seven things God hates. It's one of the seven sins God hates. God hates it. Don't enter into gossip. Play it safe. Keep your mouth shut and be ready and willing to give grace and mercy. The safe bet, <laughs> the safe bet is to not say anything, don't judge, realize you're not God, you don't know why, but let God deal with that person and, 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 and let God, let God, uh, uh, give them praise or honor, whatever, for suffering unjustly, or they receive, they receive the punishment justly for what they did. All right. But it's not our, God never, God never called us to judge someone while that, while they're being buffeted. All right. To start spreading gossip or, 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 or things about this person. All right. So now he says here, then, but the idea also is says you take it patiently. And here, there is no glory for a 
person or a, even a Christian who's, who does a sin and now they're being punished for that sin and they say to themselves, well, I'll endure this punishment. I'll endure this beating. I'll endure this for the glory of God. And God will see that and he'll honor it. And I'll receive points in heaven or I'll receive glory in heaven because I suffered I suffered for this uh, under this punishment. <laughs> right? No, no. What Peter is saying is even if you endure it, even if you endure it patiently, you're still getting what you deserve. You sinned. You did something and now you're being punished for it. Don't expect any glory, any praise, any honor for that. And that's what that's what Peter's saying here. And then he says here but if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Now, I want to uh, finish this lesson with this part, if when you do well. And the Greek word for well here is agatho, agathopoieo, agathopoieo. And agathos means good. And poieo means to do. So, Peter here is saying, if when you do well, he's talking about actually doing well, physic, not just imagining doing good deeds in your mind. It means the actual fulfillment of doing good deeds, all right? But we have to define what, what does this doing well mean? What does it refer to? Um, what are these good things that that Peter is referring to? Is it human goodness? Is it giving money to the poor? Is it helping out at the animal shelter? Is it uh, giving money to the animal shelter? Uh, helping out at the nursing home? Is it inventing some kind of new thing to help uh, stop disease or to whatever, to make life easier for people. Is this what doing good is? Now, those things are good and they should be done. I'm not saying they shouldn't. They should be done. But is it human goodness? Is if, if when you're, he's saying here, but if when you do well and suffer for it, if when you are doing good things. But what are those good things? Are they human goodness? Giving, <laughs> giving money to the poor or giving money to, to, uh, the, the homeless or whatever? I mean, that would seem kind of strange, wouldn't you think? Uh, you know, somebody gives a hundred dollars. Let's just say somebody gives a hundred dollars to the animal shelter and, uh, another person sees it and says, Hey, uh, he gets two or three of his guys. Hey, let's go beat this guy up because he gave money to the animal shelter, right? <laughs> I laugh because it, it's just silly to think that what Peter here is referring to are human acts of goodness. You know, uh, uh, in, hey, this, this scientist just invented something that'll help mankind. Let's go beat him up, right? <laughs> or this, this person just gave money uh, to, uh, to the animal shelter or, or to the, the, the nursing home. So let, let, let's punish them for that, right? No, it's silly. It's strange to think that Peter here is referring to human acts of goodness or, uh, human, human deeds, all right? Human goodness. I think what Peter here is referring to is God's goodness. It's God's goodness as opposed to human goodness. And remember, I'm not saying that human goodness isn't good. It should be done. We do need, we do live on this earth and we do, uh, there is a need for these kinds of things, for, for homeless, for, for uh, animal shelters, for um, inventing things, for um, whatever the goodness is that you're trying to planting trees, uh, cleaning the swamp or whatever. Uh, it's, 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 these are good things and we should be good stewards here on earth. But I think what Peter here is talking about is suffering for doing, 
suffering for doing something that's actually good. And what would that be? It has to be the goodness of God. Do, putting God's goodness first, all right? What is God's goodness? It's being available to God in humility and obedience to whatever God leads you to do. The well-doing that Peter is referring to is always being a testimony of God to the world. In Colossians, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17, Paul here writes to the Colossians and he says, whatever you do in word or deed, whatever you do, it's not just religious stuff, you know, singing in the choir, teaching Sunday school. No, he's saying whatever you do, that means, yes, giving money to the poor, um, uh, planting trees, whatever. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all what in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Then he says in Colossians 3, uh, 23 and 24, he says, and whatsoever you do, do it what? Heartily. Do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. So when you give money to the, the, the nursing home or whatever, you give it as unto the Lord, not unto men, knowing what? That of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. All right? In God's kingdom, there is no eternal benefit in doing acts of human goodness without God being the center. It profits us nothing. <clears throat> and that's what Peter is saying. That's what, sorry, that's what Paul, that's what Peter here is saying, is that what good is it if I give all my money to the poor and I lose my own soul? Right? What, what good is it if I give money to this organization or that organization, but I, 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 I don't do it as unto God? I don't do it as glorifying God. It profits me nothing. I get nothing in heaven. Nobody, nobody gets nothing in heaven because they did it for their own glory. See? Well, I, I just gave $10,000 to this organization. And uh, God, you, you know, in, in their mind, God, you owe me. I mean, I, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm going to get some kind of glory in heaven for that, right? <laughs> Come on, you know it. You know, you, you know people think like that. We've all thought like that, right? But if whatever we do, we do it in humility and in obedience and we do it as unto God, and not unto men, then this, this here, this is the well-doing that Peter is talking about. So he says, but if, he says here in verse uh, 20, but if when you do well and suffer for it and you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Okay, if you do well and you suffer and you take it patiently, that's acceptable. The well-doing here is doing things unto God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it unto the Lord and for the glory of God. All right? Okay? Until next lesson, we'll finish here verse 20 next lesson. Until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.